and welcome to Bloom Through Cooking. My name's Angelica and today I'm going to be discussing my favorite cookbooks. Um, these cookbooks are great whether you are a beginner or don't know how to cook at all, if you're intermediate or advanced, I think these cookbooks are great. They give you a variety of information and of course they're my favorite. And also these cookbooks that I have here, I think I have a variety of books here and they're great for anyone, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, or you eat fish or meat, I think these books will discuss a variety of things. So stay tuned, subscribe. And let's get started. All right, guys, so let's get into it. Let's talk about my favorite cookbooks. The first one I'm going to talk about, my ultimate favorite book out of the ones I'm going to be mentioning here today, it's a special cookbook to me. And the reason why is A, you maybe might recognize her name. She is on PBS. She has her own show. Um, she also is on Amazon Prime. I believe she just finished her fifth or sixth season on Amazon Prime and I actually need to go check out the season. I haven't had the opportunity to check it out yet. And the reason why this book is so special to me is because I had the pleasure of meeting her at a event that was held here in California a couple years ago. And you know, sometimes when you meet these celebrity chefs, you're not sure how they're gonna portray themselves, right? And the way her personality is on TV, it's very infectious. She's super sweet, she's super humble. And I'm so excited. And I'm talking no one other than Patti Hinich herself. Um, this is Patti's Mexican Kitchen Table. Um, I actually bought this book when I used to live in Texas. And I'm going to just flip it real quick. I'm so cute. She signed it um, when I met her in person. So this book is extra, extra special to me. Um, the reason I got this book is because I come from a Mexican background and I wanted to diversify my skills when it comes to Mexican cooking. I've always uh, enjoyed just learning different recipes and I really wanted to get to know more of my roots, so to say. So the reason I really recommend this book, and I'll have it back here for a little bit, um, it's great. Whether you are a beginner or you're looking to try different cuisines, uh, such as Mexican cuisine in this particular case, uh, this book is wonderful. She talks about how to make basic sauces from salsa verde, salsa verde, yeah, sorry, from salsa verde to salsa roja. She talks about different type of chiles. She talks about um, ancho chile and um, just a variety of chiles and how to use them. Um, let's say you're vegetarian. She has a couple vegetarian dishes in here. She has also, um, there is some meat recipes in here as well. There's some baking. Uh, one of the fun things I did here is, I don't know if you can wait to the store. When I was a little girl, I would always have pan dulce. And one of my favorite pan dulces is the porquito, <laughs> also known as a little pig or marquitos. And um, when I got older and I when I bought her book, I think she actually had the recipe on how to make them. And I got so excited. So I made them. I made them and I took them to a Christmas party um, with my family. And everybody's like, oh, did you buy them? I'm like, no, I made them. I mean, they might have not been exactly like the ones that you see at the bakeries, but um, they're pretty good. So I was just really excited to bring something um, that brings so much memories to me as a kid and to bring it during a Christmas time for my family. Um, but back to a little bit more about the cooking. Um, let's say you are vegan. I, you can definitely make some stuff in this cookbook vegan. For instance, there is a jalapeno aioli recipe in here that is amazing and she uses regular mayonnaise, but you can substitute that using veganese. Um, a little bit about what I eat. I eat like a diverse uh, diet from vegan, vegetarian to a little bit of meat. Uh, my husband is more on the pescatarian diet, so I don't consume um, meat as much as I used to. But this book is just wonderful. She even has cocktail books in here, guys, like how to make amazing cocktails, how to make great salads and um, enchiladas. And one of my favorite um, basic recipes on here as well is how to make tortillas from scratch. And if you go to my video, I'll actually show you how to make tortillas from scratch. Um, but you can actually just get this book. You, I'll link it down below on where you can get this book on Amazon. You can just go check out my video on how to make tortillas. But other than that, I mean, her book is wonderful. And it just, it's so beautifully well done. Look, look at all these chiles, guys. It has here pasilla chile. 
ancho chile, um, I mean, I'm looking at all the chile, guajillo chile, I mean, it's a piece of artwork. It's just so beautiful to look at. But like I said, it does cover just wonderful basic sauces to rice dishes, how to make some rice dishes. Um, it's just, I cannot recommend it enough. And obviously it's really special because I met her in person. So let's get on to the book number two. So the second book I'm going to be talking about is called Vegan for Everybody. And this is made by America's Tense Kitchen. Now America's Tense Kitchen has an array of books from a cooking vegetables to how to make cakes to cooking for two to cook's country. I mean, they have a variety of books. And if you haven't had the opportunity to check out America's Test Kitchen, I highly, highly, highly recommend them. Um, now, they are not America's Test Kitchen, and they do have a channel on PBS. That's how I first discovered them. And that's also how I discovered Bethy as well. But um, in that particular show on PBS, and if you go on YouTube, um, they don't really talk about too much about vegan stuff, but they do have some vegan recipes. But I was so excited when they... Uh, decided to do this book. I got this book from my husband when he stopped eating meat a couple years ago and it's been um, a wonderful book. So vegan for everybody. This is great. Let's say you're trying to consume less meat. You guys, this book has amazing recipes. It has one of my favorite um, recipes in this book is actually um, it's an oatmeal chocolate chip cookies that me and my husband love. We both like cookies, but he's the cookie monster. <laughs> so um, it has a, a really good recipe on here on how to make vegan oatmeal uh, chocolate chip cookies. Um, in addition, one of my ultimate meals in here is actually pinto Swiss chard enchiladas. Swiss chard with pinto beans um, is the stuffing inside the enchiladas. You guys, those are so good. Like super, super good. Um, it's just a great book and in addition even actually gives you um, examples of some of the ingredients or maybe some of the things that you might need um, if you're making some vegan dishes. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful recipe. It has great um, pictures as well, great step by step and I have here one of the recipes is called Thai Coconut Shrimp. I'm sure, sorry, Thai Coconut Soup with Tofu and actually my husband made this and this is you guys. You, you're a curry lover. I have some friends and I know people who love curry. If you're a vegan, you need to buy the book and try this recipe. It is so, so, so good. Um, it has, for a salad, it even tells you um, how to make um, even breakfast. Oh, another recipe I'm going to mention as I'm flipping here through the book, you guys, is... Um, one of my favorite. We actually have a Belgian waffle maker. Um, I'm a big breakfast person. I don't. I mean, I have breakfast almost every day, but I know my husband was doing the fasting diet, and so I kind of tried it with him. So sometimes I do eat like a late uh, breakfast, so to say. But anyway, um, they have a really great Belgian waffle recipe. You guys, you guys, you have to try this. It is. So good. Exactly how you see in the picture is exactly how they come out, depending, obviously, on the waffle maker um, that you have. But this is a really good book. I cannot recommend it enough. And you're going to hear me say a thousand times, I cannot recommend these books enough because these are my favorite books. So you might hear me say that a lot throughout the video. But vegan for everybody. Highly, highly, highly recommend it if you are a vegan and you want to expand your collection of books, try it if you're trying to consume less meat, try it if you want to consume more vegetables in your diet, try it. Highly recommend it. So I actually forgot um, to add this in my video, I actually deleted the clip by accident, but the next book I'm going to be talking about is um, a book that I was given as a gift, and it's called The Food Lab. Now this book is uh, super heavy, it's super super thick, and this is very much a intermediate level advance if you're into the scientific aspect of cooking because cooking does have its um, scientific approach to it and um, I believe the author's name is Jay Kenji Lopez Alt. I believe he also worked with America's Test Kitchen at one point, I'm not, I believe, I'm not 100% sure. But in addition to this book being 
amazing. It actually won a James Beard Foundation Book Award. So that's pretty big. So this book covers an array of things. Um, if you're definitely, let's say if you're a newbie, this talks about how to cut vegetables, how to blanch vegetables, how to uh, hold a knife properly. Now I am guilty of not holding my knife properly. Um, I'm not a chef, I'm not a trained professional, I'm just a person that loves cooking. Um, so I'm okay not holding the knife properly 24-7. I mean, I do try to do the whole claw, you know, claw method, um, and I know it takes time. But anyway, this book really goes into depth. Uh, how to hold your knife, um, how to cut vegetables correctly, how to blanch. Um, there's a segment here on how to cook your meat thoroughly. If you liked uh, your meat medium rare, how does medium rare look like? How does well done look like? I mean, it shows pictures and in depth on every single step. I mean, this book is it, it's amazing. It, it really is. From turkey recipes, even has how to make naan, you guys. It has um, vegetables as well. I mean, I think it's a great book. Uh, it covers for no matter what type of diet that you have, it really covers an array of things. But again, this is more a scientific approach to things. And I kind of like that about it uh, because it really gets into the nitty gritty of the details. But it's an amazing book to have. And um, I think you will be happy if you had it because you can learn so much from it. Like I said, you want to know how to cook vegetables, I mean how to prep vegetables, julienne style, the book shows you as well. So this is another uh, good book to get in your um, library collection. So the next book I'm going to be talking about, I know we just finished talking about uh, main courses and main meals. Then let's talk about baking. So this book here I'm going to be talking about is um, from, again, America's Test Kitchen because I used to watch them a lot. But I know they have really great cookbooks for everybody. So this is America's Test Kitchen, but this is their Naturally Sweet Edition. I love sweets, you guys. I don't know about you, but sweets are my guilty pleasure. If I could not love sweets that much, I think I'd be dropping more weight than I <laughs> I would probably drop a couple more pounds. <laughs> but you know what? We all have our guilty pleasures and sweets is one of them. So Naturally Sweet by America's Test Kitchen. I'm going to read a little bit here what the cover says. It says, bake all your favorites with 30 to 50% less sugar. So this is great if you are a, a sweet tooth like me and you're trying to really uh, cut back your sugar. This is a great, 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 great book. Um, one of the reasons I recommend it, this is great maybe for the holidays. This is great. And let's say if you want to, I know right now when I'm doing any, um, bringing food to like, uh, like a bunch of food to a friend's house or anything like that, or parties, I should say. Uh, but in the future, or if you wanted to drop off some cookies or something to your friends, or let's say it's someone's birthday. This actually has a great a cake recipe. Um, it's a wonderful book. In addition, what I really truly about love about this book, um, there's a particular sugar here that they use a lot in this recipe. It's called succinant. And I'm not gonna go into um, describe the process of it, but the reason I bring it up in this particular book is because they use it a lot. And I'm just gonna show you here a little sneak peek. Um, they actually talk about the process of succinant and why it's so low in sugar compared to um, coconut uh, sugar. That's one of my favorites, actually. I love coconut sugar. But it's a wonderful book. I mean, again, America's Test Kitchen is known to have a great, beautiful pictures, great step-by-step. -step. But what I really like about them, and as I'm flipping here through the book, they really tell you specifics on different sugars, so what makes that specific sugar? They talk about coconut sugar, date sugar, honey, maple syrup, just different type of sweeteners to use when you're baking. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful book, and it has some simple ingredients, um, uh, excuse me, it has simple recipes to maybe a little bit more complex ingredients. Um, one of my favorites um, in here is actually, I'm gonna see if I can find it, um, but I can't at the moment. It's actually a pecan bar recipe. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's so, so good. I think it's like less than 20 compared to the original one that they have. Because um, they also have another cookbook uh, that's on the sweet side. But it has a little bit more on the sugar content. But that pecan bar 
a recipe it is so good you guys actually i believe i made that for a party or i brought it somewhere i don't know it's a family gathering or i brought it somewhere and i remember i got raves review on that pecan bar and one of the secret ingredients that they use you guys was um rum or bourbon so 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 good um it's just delicious. I'm going up here to see what other one. It has banana nut bread. Um, I believe I made that one as well. It's just a great book. If you like to, like I said, if you have a sweet tooth and you really want to wash your sugar content um, and just, just lower it by a little bit, this is really, really good. Highly recommend. So the last book I'm going to discuss here is actually a do-it-yourself type of cookbook, so to say. And it's actually... A place where you can just create your own recipes or let's say you find a recipe online or if you have you know a magazine and you find a really good um, recipe and you want to keep it um, you could put it in there so it's called here my little binder and it actually says favorite recipes um, on it and fun fact about this particular binder I actually found it on in a thrift store many moons ago I used to do thrift shopping I used to like to buy coats and stuff and when I was walking down the aisles, I see this and I'm like, oh, great, this is kind of cool. I can put my own recipes on there. And that's the fun thing about cooking. It's once you get the knowledge and the foundation and some of the basics down, you start seeing what you like, what you don't like, and you start creating your own meals. But this is a great way. You don't have to go get, you don't have to go out and buy this. You can definitely get yourself a regular note pad and just write it down but this is kind of fun because it actually encourages you to say you want to take a picture and you want to put it on there but I actually I, ha I know I've been pretty bad about this lately but one of the recipes I have here is actually a veg a vegetarian a slash vegan soup so I remember one time I made it and it came out really good and I wanted to remember what ingredients I put on there and had put my own uh, veggie stock and fresh thyme and bay leaves and garlic and whatnot. I'm kind of reading my own recipe of what I put in there. But it looks something like this. And I think it's just a fun way to just really, you know, get recipes. Like I mentioned, if you find recipes online, you can print them out. Obviously, you want to print out the best ones just to save paper and stuff. But it really encourages you to just write things down and as a little... Um, just a great way to really just step out of that comfort zone and really explore um, different flavors when it comes to cooking. Um, so that's really fun. But I hope all these books are beneficial for you. I hope it gives you, uh, I know there's an array of different cookbooks here that I mentioned in today's videos and I hope you definitely go and pick them out. And if check your local library maybe they might have them there available at your local library or you can just go to amazon and read reviews on all the books i mentioned as i mentioned i'm going to be linking um down below with all the links to all these cookbooks on the amazon store but check them out have fun go out there and just create um create memories because I feel with cooking you can create great memories as well in addition if you can leave me a comment and let me know what are your favorite cookbooks I would love to know um what are your favorite cookbooks um I, you know I'm a cookie nerd so I definitely like to expand my um cookbooks and stuff so if you have any particular cookbooks that you like please comment down below let me know uh, why you like them I would really really like your feedback on your favorite cookbooks until next time, keep on cooking, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.